Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another lesson of the Focus on Contentful course. I'm Marcelo Lewin, the Headless Creator. As always, you can get a hold of me right there, marcelo at headlesscreator.com. Today, I'm going to talk to you all about tables inside of rich, tech rich text fields inside of a contentful entry. So, in fact, I'm not going to talk to you about it. I'm going to show you. So, let's get to it. And here we are. So uh, first of all, what is a table, right? I mean, we all know what a table is. And you can see here uh, a rich text uh, field within Contentful. And here's the table. This is what the table looks like. Now, why am I doing this instead of jumping to Contentful? First, what I want to show you is how it's broken down. Basically, you have a table right there. That's called a table. And the reason I'm pointing this out is like, yeah, I know it's called a table, but this is how it's called on the back end. You'll see it in GraphQL. So I want to, I want to tie, I want you to tie the object to the actual back end so that it's very easy to identify all the, all that information later on. Now tables have rows. They don't have columns. Yes, we know they have columns, but they really don't have columns in the back end in Contentful. What they do is they have rows, multiple rows. You can have as many rows as you want. Now, Here's the deal. The first row, you can make that a header. You don't have to, but you can make that a header. If you do, then you're going to see uh, for each cell, you're going to see an entry called table header cell. You can only have one of those, in other words, one row, you can, as many cells as you need in that row, but only one row be a table header cell. Now, I would have preferred on the back end that they store it as a table row or table header row. I would prefer that because it's much easier. And then we just use a table cell for everything. But they decided to do it as a table row. So you'll see all, all of them as table rows. And within the row, you'll see that there each cell is named table header cell. Then you know to display it differently as a header. Okay, so these you can see is a, it's a table row with two table header cells in there. Then you'll have a whole bunch of more rows. Again, they're just called table rows. That's all they're called. And then the cells in this case are just table cell. That's it. Now within the cell, you're going to have content and the content are just stored as content notes. So that we're going to come back to this when I show you uh, the GraphQL, but that gives you basically an overview of how Contentful creates and stores tables inside of a rich text field. And of course you can have many tables, right? Not just one, you can have many tables. So let's jump into Contentful and let's make sure here I'm covering everything. I have my uh, table of contents here to make sure I'm covering everything. So how do you enable tables inside of um, a content model? Well, I created a simple content type that you can see right here. And it's got a full name uh, as my short text and then a bio, which is rich text. So if we go into settings under formatting options, you're gonna see here this icon. This is your table icon. So you wanna make sure that it's selected. This is not selected. This is selected and then you wanna save it. Once you do that, when we go into the actual content and our, cre our content entry and create one, we'll go ahead and so I'm gonna create my name and I'm going to go, um, I'm not going to enter anything. I'm actually going to click on the table. And you can see by default, one thing it does, it puts a space uh, above it. Uh, you can delete that. But by default, it creates two rows, right? The first row is a header row, remember? Uh, we spoke about that here. And it's actually header cells. It's got two header cells. And the second row is just a, a regular row with, with uh, cells, right? Which is the table cell. So if I enter here, we'll just put, we'll put in, um, for example, we'll put in date and we'll put in, um, we'll just say uh, this task. Keep it simple. We'll just keep it very simple. Um, okay. So for date, I'm going to put in 3.15.22 and for task, here is my first task. We'll just keep it like that. Let's go ahead and publish this. Okay. So now we published it. So um, we can add another table if we wanted to. We can click on table here and you can see we have our second table. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this for now because I just want to focus on one and then we'll see what this looks like on the back end. The way to delete a table, it's not, uh, you could do this, but it doesn't always work. So the best way to delete it is here on each cell, you'll have a little icon. You can click on it and just say delete table. That'll delete your table. Okay. 
Um, all right, so we have that. Let's go ahead and publish the changes here. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh because I see that little, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. But of course, it's a live uh, stream, so something has to happen. That wasn't planned for, of course. All right, so we have a table that has two rows and each row has two cells. Okay, so how do we edit this stuff? Well, let's say we wanna add another row. What you do is you click on here and you can add a row above, add a row below. You can also add a column, but really what that's doing is adding cells to the left to the right. So you can see I added a, a column to the left. You can add a column to the right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete column and I'm gonna delete this column because I wanna keep this straight delete column. So that's how you add columns, how you delete columns. You can add a row above or below. So we'll add a row above and then we can add a row, a row below. Okay. Very simple. How to delete rows. Very simple. Again, delete row. You select the row you want to delete, delete row. Okay. So that covers pretty much how do you add rows, columns, which remember they're not real columns, they're cells. And how do you manipulate it? Now, let's say you don't want the header. You probably saw this already right here. Disable table header. We'll remove it and now uh, everything are just cells. So so that is pretty much the, uh, the way to manipulate tables within uh, Contentful, right? We'll go ahead and enable the cell. Let's make sure I covered everything here so far. Um, okay, so, so that's that. I'm gonna tell you real quick some limitations with tables, right? Number one, you can only have one header and it can only be at the top. So for example, let's say I know sometimes people put headers at the bottom or they use a column as a header. Um, you can't do that. There's only one header. You can either enable it or disable it. That's it. For now, these are current limitations. Uh, it, may, it may change in the future. You cannot add a table inside of a cell. You just can't. It's, uh, it's, you can't nest tables basically. Also notice that some of the options are turned off in cells. So for example, I can't do an unordered list, an order list, a block quote, a, a, a line in HR, horizontal line, and we already mentioned tables. And notice when I put my cursor here, I can embed an entry, which is a block entry, an inline entry, and an asset, right? But when I go in here, I can only embed an inline entry. For now, those are the current limitations of uh, cells uh, or of, of uh, tables within Contentful. The other thing you can't do is you cannot resize tables or cells. You just can't resize them, which to be honest with you, I'm happy about that because Resizing cells means you're tying it to a design. And we, what do we always say in the content modeling weekly is we don't tie design in with content, right? So you let the channel figure out how to display that. Um, okay, there's a couple of other things you can't do, uh, which really it's kind of design, but not really is uh, you can combine cells or rows. And I'll show you in just a minute when we jump into uh, using um, uh, Google Docs, cutting and pasting. Okay, so that's that here. So that takes care of what you can do natively, right? Not cut and pasting, but natively. So now let's jump into Google Doc. And here I just created a, a very simple table, but I put in a bunch of stuff on purpose to see how that works, how it translates from here to... So I'm going to go ahead and select the table. Let's go ahead and select the entire table. I just selected the entire table. Notice this table has a header. The header has a red color background. It also has three cells. This cell has um, an ordered list. I also embedded an image. Now in here, I have bold text, italic, regular, and then I have a headline, right? This is a sort of formatting as a heading one. I have a table embedded within a table. Then I have two cells that are merged and two rows that are merged. Okay, so we just copied all of that. Let's go ahead and paste it here and notice what happened. So let's look at it. First of all, it's not a header. It's just a regular table row, right? 
if you want to make it a header, we'll have to do this and say enable header number one. But the color is not there. Again, I appreciate that because keeping design separate.